All right, to start out with, I'm going to get these power distribution boards set up. This is the one that comes in the Martian 2 kit, and I think it's fine. It just doesn't have any step downs or BECs on it. <clears throat> But it is part of the uh, structural integrity of the frame, so I, I really have to use it. And then I'm going to use this Diatone Power Hub. This is version 7, and it does not include, at least from what I can find on the internet, it does not include filters for the video. Even though it has camera and uh, transmitter, video transmitter connections, I don't believe that it's filtered so I don't know that for a fact so what I'm gonna do is I am not going to use these my camera and video transmitter transmitter can both accept 12 volts so I'm just going to use the 12 volt BEC output for my camera and run that to a small LC filter so I know for a fact it's filtered because I like real clean video and then I'm going to use the 5 volt BEC to power the flight control board. So a lot of guys been hooking these up different ways but what I'm gonna do instead of hooking my which it is supplied in the kit my uh, connector to the board as it's designed I'm gonna I'm gonna connect wires positive and negative to these pads cut this to the right length and then I'm gonna zip tie through these connector holes for my uh, connector, battery connector. That way if I do have a crash and it rips the battery off of there, it's not going to damage this power distribution board. And then that'll put battery voltage to this power distribution board and then I'm going to go ahead and use the ESC pads on this board. And then from there I'm going to connect positive and a negative wire that will just bend up and connect to the battery in on my power distribution board like that. And that's basically this board is basically just going to be my BECs. That's all it's going to do. It's a shame I have to carry that around, but that's probably the easiest way to go about it and then on top of that will be my flight controller. So first step is I'm going to get this cut to length and get this soldered on and zip tied down so I can connect a battery to it. And then I'm going to have come out with a couple of uh, wires so I can connect to my actual uh, power distribution board. So we'll come back when we get that done. All right, so here's what we have. I got the uh, battery plug-in lead soldered, and then I soldered a couple. These just happen to be 16-gauge uh, wires. That's all I had laying around, so that's what I used. Probably a little bigger than necessary, but... And then I have the uh, battery lead zip-tied to where the uh, JST or the, the uh, connector will typically... XT60 will typically uh, solder down. So then this will lay over. And that'll bring battery power to all of my or, uh, ESC pads as well as powering the BEC. Next thing I need to do is basically you're going to put together part of the frame. Now this comes in the kit and I think it's fiberglass, but it's a isolator pad for the power distribution board and it just goes underneath the power distribution board like that. It says to use 12 millimeter by 3 millimeter screws. So each arm takes three screws so 12, 12 for that and four of them will come up and instead of having a nut on the end you'll have uh, the plastic standoffs for the for the flight controller which is where I'm going to put my power distribution board so let me go ahead and put all that together and then we'll come back and look at it and see how it 
see how it turned out. Actually on this, let me just show you real quick. I used some liquid electrical tape just on those three connections. I could have put my negative over here and kind of balanced it out, but that's just how it worked out. So I don't think it'll make a difference. I already had it soldered down when I decided to do this. So um, just to be safe, there's no pads underneath these edges of the of the board here, so it's probably not going to be a problem. But just in case, I put electric, liquid electrical tape on those. Maybe I'll put a little bit on that pad too, but that's the negative one. All right, let me go get that done. We'll come back and look. Okay, for putting this together, I put 12 of the 12 millimeter long bolts, and then I just used some tape on the back just to hold them in place. And it's a pretty poor diagram, but the way it looks to me, it looks like the arms go on top of that. And then the fiberglass plate, and then the power distribution board. So as I get ready to put that together, I noticed this hole on that inner bolt right there was blocked by the wires that I soldered on there. So I had to kind of spread them apart. Make sure you can have those part far enough that you can get one of these uh, lock nuts on there for that particular bolt. So let me put all those bolts in and the arms on and tighten them down and then we'll come back and look at it. Alright, I just found something else I wanted to show. Some of the videos that I've seen, and there's not a lot of them on YouTube putting this particular model together. Some people have been talking about some of the older models here with this uh, center fitting kind of loosely. Mine seems, I don't have it tightened down, but that seems to fit pretty tight so the tolerances they they must have tightened up on that we'll see how the rest of it goes together but so far it's looking pretty good I I'm pleased with the quality of this kit and how everything is lining up see how tight the tolerances are on that but it does fit right over those bolts pretty snug that's the fiberglass plate and then on top of that, the power distribution board. Slips right on there, and then I have room to put, put the nuts on the top. So it looks like those bolts are going to be about the right length. Um, so I'll get the uh, nuts all on there and tighten down. Now these four, the inner ones, I'm not going to put uh, nuts on those because those will be where the power distribution board mounts. So let me get the nuts on there, tighten it up, and we'll come back and look. Okay, I have eight of the uh, bolts in and nuts, but the nuts are, are just still loose, not tightened down. And here's how much play is in the... I don't know if you can see that on the video or not, but... There is a little bit of play in there. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch between those arms, but I'm sure that'll go away once I tighten it down. Just wanted you to see how much play was actually in there. All right, change the camera a little bit there so you can see it better. So I'll just take and Put a little daub on there. Oh, my tube came out. Brand new one there. And these kind of make a mess, so then I'll just wipe it up. Get rid of all that stringy stuff. But this will keep your plastic standoffs from loosening up vibrations during flight, which I've had happen over time didn't cause me to crash or anything but I noticed it wasn't looking good my 
entire stack was bouncing around so I don't know if you can see that but I got a glob on each one of those and then we can go with our power distribution board on top of that so let me get four standoffs and we'll come up on top of that and then I'm going to start uh, soldering to this some of the wires that are going to come out and go to other pieces of equipment other electronics actually let me show you another tip that I have and I'll use this always when I build or take things apart but I like to use hot glue for keeping things secure even on electronics like this power distribution board or even my uh, flight controller like those four drops that I put on there and just as an example I'm gonna put a daub of this glue on the power distribution board in that arm right there just a big old nasty glob and let it cool and then at a later time when you come back and you decide that you're gonna remove a part or take something apart or work on it you got all this hot glue all over everything and um, it sticks pretty well until you hit it with just a bit of uh, isopropyl or rubbing alcohol so I just go to the store regular old store and buy this kind of stuff big bottle of it get my q-tip down into it then you got that glob of glue and it's cooled down so I just saturate the hot glue with that alcohol and then get like an exacto knife or something and it pulls right off of there and doesn't leave anything on your part so the same thing will work with any electronic stuff too if I wanted to go take that off of there I would just hit all those with my q-tip with alcohol on it let it set for just a couple seconds and then peel it right off of there so it's a great uh, tool I use it for all my ESC wires and or uh, yeah anything that's connected to the to the uh, flight controller or power distribution board keeps it all secure all right for this last section on the power distribution board I got three leads made up here one to power the VBAT on the uh, flight controller for my telemetry. The second one is going to be 5 volts to the flight controller for power. And then a 12 volt to power an LC filter which will supply power for my video camera and my video transmitter. So on this distribution board, these three pads, the cam is uh, video signal it just passes through the board then we've got a set of plus and minus of here and a plus and minus here and you can control if that's either 5 volts or 12 volts by bridging these little pads over here so I'm going to bridge this one so it comes out 12 volts and that's going to supply power to my LC filter for the camera and the video transmitter and then out the front I've got 5 volt pads over here and 12 volt pads over here. So this 12 volt will go to power the camera, or excuse me, will go, uh, yeah maybe I'll do it that way. 12 volts here to power the camera, 5 volts to power the uh, flight controller, and then uh, 12 volts back here just, just to supply power actually what I want to do is come off these two pads for the VBAT because these are ju just direct battery voltage that's coming right out of the the uh, battery plug so I'm gonna lay this back down and get those soldered up So for the for the VBAT, I'm going to use these two. So let's get some tin on them. And 
then get one of these leads. I want one of these longer, two or, two are kind of longer and then one is not so long. And then I like to use a pair of tweezers when I do this fine stuff because it just works out good for me. So I'll pick up my little wire with my tweezers and I want all these wires coming inward toward the toward the board. So negative. Make sure I got them oriented correctly with the polarity. negative side I don't know how much you can actually see I don't have a zoom on that camera so we'll see and the positive okay and then out the front my 5 volt pads for the just for the uh, flight controller so let's put some solder on those These I might bend and eh, we'll just go outward with these. So positive on the far side. I don't need tweezers for this one. And negative in here. Just make sure I got these set up properly. And then back here, I could use either side. I'm going to go with these over here. So this is uh, VBAT. This will be 12 volts out. Well, let's just go right up front here. 12 volts out to the camera. I'll go with these two, and I won't even have to mess. Won't even have to mess with those back there. That goes to the flight controller for 5 volts to power it. This is uh, VBAT and then to the LC filter for the camera up here on the front with this one. So Positive So then these will connect to my flight controller. And um, before I put it on, the next step is going to be mount the motors, ESCs, and get those um, soldered in and strapped down. And then we'll move on to the flight controller. So this is going to be it for this segment with the power distribution board set up and uh, the basic frame assembly, including the arms and the uh, bottom plate.